This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is a preamble of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now, know we therefore, we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual, do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. September 14th, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, the Prime Minister promising more hurricane relief for Abaconians, the impact of COVID-19 on special needs students, and a pro athlete explains the benefits of earning an IFBB pro card. So let's start the morning off right. Welcome to the Morning Edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. And I'm the handsome Charles Fisher. <laughs> Devonair, Devonair, right? So I know last evening was raining. Well, why was raining. did you laugh when, you, when I came to work this morning? The first thing you said, Fisher, you're very handsome this morning. And uh, you, when, you, when, I, when, I, when I want our viewers to know that when we're off air, LaDawn gives me so much compliment. And then when she comes on set, it's like she's a different, different person. I have, to, I have to try to put on a little something for the viewers. But you're pretty. I, I always say you're Thank pretty. You. Thank you. Thank Italia. God for your parents. They, uh, they, yeah. they, they produce yeah. a beautiful little gem there. <laughs> <laughs> and thank God for Italia too. She makes us yeah, look even more Italia beautiful makes you this extra, morning. Yes. Actual uh, spiffy this morning. But, you know, we, we were out, like, like I said, last week, and mm -hmm. we, we met this elderly couple, mm -hmm. and they, they said that they watched the morning news. And then I went out again last week, Kathleen Bryce, over there in Long Island. She's a young old lady, and she says she watches wow. us every morning. She says to ease up on the dawn. The dawn oh, is gosh. my friend. <laughs> and Miss Bryce, yes, I'm easing up on thank the dawn. So, so, so to say thank you to thank Bryce you. and everybody. Thank you so much, I'm going to Bryce. encourage everybody to continue to watch the morning edition. And for the first time in a long time, we don't have any prizes to give away this morning. We're ah, looking for a sponsor yeah. to give away some prizes later on mm -hmm. as things go on, but we don't have a prize. But we do have the weather this morning. Our Desmond Sanders is out there on the streets with the traffic. Good morning, Desmond. Well, a pleasant good morning, Charles and Adon. I'm out here at the intersection of Wolf Road and Jerome Avenue. Showers of blessing, and uh, we can expect some more showers in just a few minutes. Overcast skies, but the streets are busy. A number of people making their way to the, the, their destinations, heading out to work and their various destinations on a beautiful Tuesday morning. I've got Corporal Patrick Camp joining me on the broadcast this morning. We, we've just, we're just hours away from general elections. And what are some of those protocols and procedures for our motoring public? Uh, good morning, Mr. Sanders, and good morning, Bahamas. Uh, one of the things I want to remind persons uh, who are traveling to the polls, uh, please to be mindful, to practice social distancing, and uh, because whether you accept it or believe it or not, persons are getting sick, persons are dying. Uh, the, this disease is very real, and I want to remind the persons out there to please, especially when you want these vehicles and you are tightening up in your, in, in your cars with other persons, to remember to wear your mask. 
uh, the protocols are still in place, and we expect you to carry those out. Now, just up to yesterday, uh, I saw a few motorcades with some several political parties. What is the correct procedure? I'm driving on the streets. I'm a, I'm a motorist, and there's a there's a, a car or a truck with a party promoting their party or whatever. What what's the procedure? But one of the things you want to do, especially for these 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 long motorcades, you want to drive with due care and attention. There is no need to drive excessively fast. We have motorists who are weaving in and out of traffic. That's a no. You you risk hitting oncoming traffic. Also. There is nothing wrong with giving way to persons who wants to enter and exit off of, off of the main thoroughfare, okay? There's no need to block up the intersection. Uh, the laws are still in effect for those persons, even a part of the motorcade as you support your party. And definitely the curfew remains in effect this Thursday, election day. But definitely it is law and it is still in effect. Thank you very much. Corporal Patrick Camp joining us on our traffic segment, the broadcast here. Showers are coming down, so LaDon and Charles back to the studio. Want to remind you guys, motorists, to please exercise extreme caution on the streets as election fever heats up and continues to heat up until Thursday, the big day. R Rain or sunshine, Desmond, thanks for getting the job done. We are waking up to 73 degrees, partly cloudy, wind north at one mile per hour, humidity 94%. Now, the tropical moisture and troughing along our eastern border are maintaining the unsettled weather over the Bahamas. For all areas, weather partly cloudy to cloudy, hot and humid, with scattered showers and widely scattered thunderstorms. Gusty winds and higher seas are expected in showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. Your daytime high temperature, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Your overnight low, 72. As we look ahead to Wednesday and Thursday, once again, rain in the forecast straight through Saturday. On Wednesday, 90 in the day, 76 in the night. And then on Thursday, the same 19 today, 77 at night, expect some showers on Election Day. After two years of post-Hurricane Dorian restoration and recovery, Free National Movement leader, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, listed even more items on his party's agenda for Abaco if re-elected as the next government on September 16th. Now, during a rally in North Abaco Monday, the Prime Minister admitted that the COVID-19 pandemic slowed some of the island's restoration. However, his government is determined to ensure Abaco remains one of the country's most vital economies. He announced the creation of a disaster recovery program that will apply to the island's hardest hit areas. The concessions available under the Special Economic Recovery Zone has been extended to December 21st. The extended disaster recovery program will include a further extension of the Special Economic Recovery Zone concessions. Further, we will earmark a specific portion of the Ministry of Social Services budget to the needs of Abaco. I want to make it clear that a lot of individuals here in Abaco have applied for Crown land. It is only fair. The land is your land. It is not my land. It is you, the people's land. And I understand that some of you may have gotten denial letters. We will deal with that. The Parliamentary Registration Department making it easier for seniors and disabled Bahamians to vote on Thursday. A concierge services will be available at the very large polling stations. You can call the Parliamentary Registration Department Center Monday to Wednesday, September 15th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and on Election Day, September 16th from 8 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. for further information. Meantime, operations at the Princess Margaret Hospital's Rand Morgue has been suspended until further notice. A public hospital's authority release confirmed that this would include the identification of remains and the collection of remains by funeral homes. Head of the Princess Margaret Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department, Dr. Krista Wells, says since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, staff have been on the front line of the COVID-19 fight. She says the current situation is unsustainable and calls on the public to bear with medical professionals who are emotionally emotionally and mentally burnt out. People are dying from COVID-19 and we cannot sustain what is happening in terms of our health care and providing care. We cannot continue. We need the help of the community to partner with us. As we as healthcare members, as we render quality care 
We ask that you partner with us, adhere to the safety protocols established by the Ministry of Health, our public health services, and you are encouraged to get vaccinated. Home porting numbers have been quite impressive since its launch earlier this year. NASA Cruise Port CEO Mike Morrow says the first month, June, pulled in seven to eight ships. On July 21st and 22nd, and in August, those numbers doubled to 42. And at last count, the port was just under 30 arrivals for September. We're going to surpass August, and so what we're seeing is a expected uh, jump in ship arrivals every month. And by year end, we would expect to um, see anywhere or somewhere in the neighborhood of about 200,000 passengers for the month of December. A new bail management system officially launched on Monday. The software model was automatic. The process of applying for and processing Supreme Court bail applications through a customized e-application along with a web-based portal for lawyers and other stakeholders. Senior Justice Bernard Turner says a new bail management system is intended to make it easier for a person charged with a crime to apply for bail, which an attorney can do from their office. The system also comes with physical kiosks at the Bahamas Department of Corrections and a number of police stations on New Providence and Grand Bahama. He can continue to do what he, what persons charged with criminal offenses have always done, which is to write a letter to the courts. But now when that letter is written, it no longer has to go through a process of being physically delivered to the court and a date being fixed. That letter is uploaded electronically to the kiosk located at the Department of Correctional Services and transmitted automatically to the criminal registry responsible for the setting down of bail applications. And when we come back, we'll share the story of an educator who's assisting special needs students in a COVID environment. So keep it locked. Smartest shoppers are shopping in Nassau. Variety disposable products versus the other guys. $120.40 versus $150. Variety disposable products, 25% savings. Bingo, save $3. Badia, save $2. Bounty hand towel, $1. And that's how the smartest shoppers saved over $30 on this cart at Variety Disposable. It's the final stretch when you decide. The FNM has a bold vision which includes greater ownership of the economy by Bohemians. The country recognizes a change is needed and the change that they need is right here. We're talking about change, real change in this next general election. We are ready to take this country forward with vision. Join the ZNS News team as we bring you Election Night in the Bahamas. Watch, follow, or stay connected with the most trusted name in news. Election Night, you decide. Thursday, September 16th, live at 6 p.m. right here on the ZNS Network. Having the choice to dine indoors is so 2020. Make your appointment to be vaccinated today. This message has been brought to you by the government of the Bahamas in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. What I love most about working for the Bahamas tonight is that we don't only focus on New Providence. We cover the entire Bahamas. We have a team here in the northern Bahamas that is ready to bring you the stories, the people, and the news that matter to you. From point A to Z, covering hurricanes to elections and everything in between. It is important that you follow these four R's when taking your medications. Right drug. Remember that each medication is specific for each individual and what may work for one person may not work for the other. Right dose. Taking more or less than what is prescribed by your provider may cause you to either run out of your pills faster, it may affect your kidneys or liver, and it may even worsen your medical condition. Right time. 
Taking medications when told ensures that you have enough medication in your body to fight off the illness you may have. Right way. If your medication calls for you to take it whole, with food, or at night only, please follow these directions as there may be side effects. Make a commitment today to be adherent to your medication regimen and practice healthy living. This message has been brought to you by the Bahamas AIDS Foundation with funding provided by PEPFAR, USAID Local Capacity Initiative Small Grant. Large beach and pool parties are not ideal in this COVID environment, but keeping just a few friends close while in the water is actually a good idea. So here's another pointer. They say the more the merrier, and when you're planning on spending a day of fun in the water, that might be what you want to do. Swimming with someone else, especially when doing aquatic activities, is a standard safety practice. If you're by yourself and there's an emergency, having someone to call for help or assist is much better than struggling alone. Swimming with a buddy, swimming with a buddy, not swimming alone, allowing you to have the ability to have somebody with you if you get into trouble. It's nice to be able to go in a social environment with a buddy and be able to talk and enjoy the environment. Crystal Darling, ZNS Digital Media. fallout from the global pandemic along with a surge in cases continues to have an impact on the growth and development of our special needs students. The morning team caught up with an educator working closely with the students for an update on just how they're faring in these times. They, they embraced it, yes, but they really wanted to be face to face. The Stable Inn School has long been a safe haven for its 160 students who enjoy the luxury of face-to-face -face learning, getting that hands-on treatment from the teachers. Thrusted into the new world of a virtual learning platform, special education instructor Sheree Farkerson says nearly two years in and some students have still not been able to adapt. They need the teacher in the room helping them. Uh, some of our students are functional and some are severely intellectually disabled. And so those that are severely in intellectually disabled, they really, really need that help. And those have been suffering because they don't have the teacher. And many of them don't have also the parents. Some have lost parents, some have lost loved ones. And some have only the grandmother, and maybe the grandmother doesn't know fully how the online platform works. The school offers a functional program for students who rely heavily on online and hands-on training and not academics. However, Farquharson says the economic crisis, along with other social ills within households, have stifled efforts to meet individual needs. Uh, some of them are distracted. Some of them go online and they're all over the place on the internet and mentally it is affecting them and one can tell with the quality of work that's being given as well as the lack of work that has been given some of them are not handing in any assignments some don't turn on the zoom program some of them aren't coming to classes but despite those challenges, Farquharson remains positive and optimistic about the way forward. Teachers have begun the term knowing that we have to be the ones to encourage our students. We have to be the positive ones. We have to go online even if we don't feel like being there and motivate our students. And my outlook is that despite the circumstances my students will learn and the students that I have this term, they are positive, they are charged, they're ready to begin. The parents are also supportive and the parents have realized that this is our reality. Prayer is said to be the method believers use to communicate with God. And with that in mind, a local group has decided to organize a National Day of Prayer tomorrow. Joining us live in studio to talk about this event is Minister Patricia Johnson Pratt of Bahamas Travail 242. Mrs. Pratt, welcome to the Morning Edition. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Mrs. Pratt, tell us a little bit about your organization and why did you start it? Well, um, 
It was a special collaborative effort of over 40 independent and um, denominational prayer groups who came together to combine our efforts in prayer across the nation. And the group was started, or the initiative was started, because there was a burden. There was a great need for us to come together as one to pray for our nation, and in particular, our upcoming general elections. So give us more, uh, I guess, more details of your National Day of Prayer uh, scheduled for tomorrow. So Wednesday, September 15, 2021, of course, has been um, dubbed a day, a national day of prayer. And this is by proclamation from the government of the Bahamas, the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis. And um, the last part of the proclamation, he is encouraging the Bahamas and all citizens to take part in all of the events that we will be having. Um, we'll start at 6 p.m. with just prayers um, for all of the the candidates will be praying for all of the polling divisions. We will be just lifting up the nation for a time of peace and for law and order to be maintained. And so all are invited to join us via Facebook and on Zoom to take part of this. And of course, you can um, get all of the vital information from our 242 Travail Bahamas Facebook page. Mrs. Pratt, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition and all the best to you and your event tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. And as we head to the break, we take a look back at today in Bahamian history. In 1963, the £2 million pound Lucayan Beach Hotel was on show to the public for the first time. And in 1983, on the same day, the Bahamas Electricity Corporation commissioned an extension to its Clifton Pier power station. of greatness in each of us. That spark is called personality. Individual gifts and talents provide the fuel to set that spark ablaze. Each child has the right to an education which values their personality and nurtures their talents, while teaching them to be respectful to their parents and their cultures. Just hours remaining before the general elections on Thursday, local fashion designers are creating party designs for those eager party supporters. Our Desma Saunders was out there to find out how. From shirts to two-piece cuts to jogging sets, local designers are spicing up this year's 2021 general election campaign, stitching some of the most sassy, classy, colorful, and memorable fashion pieces second to none. When I started to design it, honestly, I didn't know what I was doing until God showed me how to design it and how to, to present it. So I was able to make all of these shirts different styles. 43-year-old Michelle Joaquin says her divinely inspired pieces are grabbing the attention of many onlookers near this busy Village Road thoroughfare. Everybody love it. Everybody saying they love it, they love it, they love it. I also had some cushions for all the... F&M and the PLP cushions are already solo. I have all the parties, F&M, PLP. The only thing I didn't get is some DNA. And some other shirts I didn't get, but these what I keep to come up with so far. And these designers are cashing in big time. Regardless of your political affiliation, local fashion designer Chanel Presenti has just the style you're looking for to get you noticed on election day. But I have one now. It takes about 10 shirts, and this will cost $100. We have a lot of fashion today, a trending now. So um, once you, you have an idea, you can bring it to me. Um, I'll size you up, and of course, I'll make you whatever you desire. With election day just hours away, local designers are already getting rave reviews and responses, according to fashionista Chrissy Strum. The response is really good. I have really great support. It was social media, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. It's really good. Um, it's crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, it's great. It's, it's really crazy. Local fashion designers making their imprint and inking their signatures during this year's election campaign. Now the news from the fitness world. Now, despite the pandemic, some local bodybuilders and fitness competitors are still training, hoping to earn pro cards to be able to compete on the international stage. Local physique competitor Tara Knowles was an IFBB pro card and shares the benefits, benefits of having it. The opportunities doesn't have to be local anymore where you have to wait for a national show. There are actual opportunities overseas um, just to get yourself um, familiar with the the actual camaraderie and the competition spirit itself, I think that it's going to be a good way and a good thing coming in the near future as it relates to people trying to get into the event and not being grounded or, I would say, boxed in by just local activities. Minor League Baseball players Chavez Young and the New Hampshire Fisher Cats have not played for the last 11 days due to three persons in their organization testing positive for COVID-19. 2020 made me realize how blessed of an opportunity I have just you now just to be playing the game I love, why I've been watching growing up and what I wanted to always want to be. Um, it made me realize you can't take these moments for granted. Speaking on the Toronto Blue Jays podcast, Young also spoke about what brought him into baseball. I was big on track. I was yeah. really big. My dad was really big on tra track, like really big on track. He loved track. Until this day, he loved track. Um, I, used to, I used to run track when I was like road races, like when I was like three, starting when I was like three <laughs> or four. Like, yeah, he just, even if I was not in the event, he just put me on the road to run for like 20 seconds. And now, all right, you're done. <laughs> I know the Bahamas are big on track and field. So I've been yeah. running, running road races a lot. And then it was just, me and my mommy were just watching TV. And then she flipped it on the Chicago White Sox and Chicago Cubs game. When it was, I think it was at the Cubs. Like, I was an athlete. I, like, I played everything, right? And the Bahamas, like, you're an athlete, you're playing everything. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you don't play that sport. And my coach, my coaches, Coach Higgs and Coach Opie, man, they know I was an athlete. They, they grabbed me every day and they, they, you know, put me in the game. And I don't even, I wouldn't know what the positions was. I would just play in the middle of the field because I see that's where the ball again hit the whole time. I played baseball when I was five, but I didn't take it serious. And I realized, it was, oh, like, that looks fun. I, want to, I really want to take this serious until, like, I was, like, 11 or 12. Um, I saw it on TV, and I could, I watched I watched Alfonso Soriano hit three home runs, and I was like, yep, I want to do this one day. That is Chavez Young. Now his team is in mm -hmm. COVID protocol, so they haven't played in the last 11 days. Hopefully they can hit the diamond tomorrow. That's most of our professional athletes, the behemoths, I don't know how they did it this year. Wow. For the last year, our athletes, our track and field athletes, have been trained under these conditions. Mm -hmm. Basketball, just about everybody. But tomorrow is Venice Day. We're going into Can't the wait. kitchen, what's yeah. on your plate. Can't and wait. tomorrow, LaDawn and I will be chefing it up right here. You know what? what are Viewers, we go on Facebook and tell us what you want us to chef up tomorrow, and then we, 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 we can do that. I see that uh, Cindy uh, brought us some flour cake. I think we need to what get is, someone what is, to, what is flour to actually cakes? make us some or to show us how to make What is flour, flour cakes? Cake. It's made, I, guess, I think it's from Cat Island, perhaps, ooh, and ooh. it's made out of flour, sugar, water, milk, coffee, ooh. tea. You, you could eat it with. Oh, uh, you yeah. Google that? The, no. You, you don't know how to no, make it, but you sure know how to. So what it goes with, yeast, good with tea? Tea, coffee. You know, you guys love your Starbucks in the morning. So, yeah. Yeah. Flour cake. I wonder why they name it flour cake. And, well, and, and, well, and, well, and cake are peel. made of flour. So we're going to put on a peel for someone from Cat Island to come into the studio to teach us how to make the flour cake, because we really want to know. How and to they must it. have patience, because... But <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everybody loves to eat around here, so yeah, we, we get So tomorrow, yes, viewers, please, on our Facebook page, tell us what do you want us to chef up in the kitchen tomorrow, uh -huh. or what's on your plate, and make sure, that it, make sure that we cook it good, I don't want our crew to have no belly ache because Thursday we need them to go and... And you need to go easy on the salt. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be horrible tomorrow. We were going to do chicken wings, but viewers, just... Let us know on the Facebook page what do you want us to chef up in the kitchen tomorrow, and we'll be doing it right here. What are you gonna do? Noodles? I'm gonna do some chicken wings. Chicken Fish? wings for breakfast. 
Be sure to stay tuned to the ZNS Network for news as it happens, TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. And that's a wrap for us this morning for the entire team. Oh, that's open call. Let me say she want me to cook pancake and <laughs> pancake and what? Grits? Okay, I can cook some pancake I think, and grits I think I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy okay. an omelet tomorrow. Uh, and this yes. who this is? I got a one stew fish. Tyrone. What to Charlie won everything. Just yeah. to put the food in front of Charlie, Charlie yeah. everything. won everything. Oh, I, I, I want air, man. Stop calling everything. me for orders, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go on Facebook and, and say what you want. I want air. <laughs> so, <laughs> have a great morning, everybody. <laughs>